GP Bullhound, Europe's leading technology investment bank, has released its latest research report, Fintech, Anything But Alternative, an in-depth look at the state of the global investment landscape in the sector. Here to tell you more about its findings are GP Bullhound's Fintech experts, Claudio Alvarez and Carl Vesberg. Fintech is growing from strength to strength, and over the past three years, close to $14 billion has been invested into Fintech companies by global venture capital firms. This has created significant shareholder value, and there are 39 fintech companies valued at over a billion dollars. The key trends we're seeing in fintech are global expansion and mature segments like alternative lending and payments take the majority of investor interest. In Europe, we're seeing the likes of Funding Circle, Adyen, Paysafe, and others hold their own against their US and Asian counterparts. This means the flow of growth capital into fintech is only set to increase as companies continue to grow robustly and start generating meaningful profits in the more mature sectors. This is a testament to the resilience of fintech companies and the vital role they play in the digital ecosystem, which is now the mainstream. Of course, rapid expansion and the jump into mainstream financial services bring their own challenges. Many of the issues affecting banks also have an impact on fintech startups. PSD2, for example, will change banking in Europe and established fintech companies also need to be proactive in their response. And the continued growth of fintech companies is only increasing the demand for skills, which means that entrepreneurs have to find new ways to attract and retain top-class talent. We've spoken to CEOs at the forefront about their views on the sector, the challenges and opportunities that they have faced, and about the future of fintech and what specific innovations they will see attract interest over the next couple of years. Here's what they had to say. Um, so I think the reason why fintech is growing so much right now is because technology has reached a certain point where everyone has a smartphone and, and some other technologies such as screen scraping in some cases, mobile bank ID in Sweden. All of those together starts to reach a point where it makes sense. It actually, you can actually change things. But I also feel that it's very early. There are actually very few fintechs that actually make a good profit as it is right now. So I think we're at the stage where the technology is starting to be good enough. I think uh, we've actually. I think there is a bit of a flight to quality, mm. like you said, and I think so. For a business like us, we've been fortunate to attract really good investors like Atomico um, and through good advisors like GP Bullhan, of course. Um, but uh, I think that there's a lot of hype around fintech. Well, certainly there has been in the past, mm. and I think, at, like a lot of parts of the fun, uh, sorry, the technology sector, I think people get really excited about a new vertical, and fintech was definitely the same. Yeah. Uh, but then I think there was a realization that a lot of these businesses actually will struggle to ever make money. And so from an investor's perspective, it's not that great an investment. Yeah. And so, you know, so businesses that can show that they have a real business model that is sustainable um, and can be profitable are likely to be the winners. I think from our perspective, we're a little bit skeptical. If you're lending a billion dollars a year and you can't make money, then I think you do have to ask that question. Yeah. How many billions do you have to lend yeah before you are a profitable business. Um, certainly there are some that are still being able to, to raise capital, but then I think you look at the lending club experience in the US where actually that, that can come unstuck yeah. quite quickly. Yeah. I mean, when we started off uh, a couple of years ago, this, this was sort of a pure payments business that we were in. But I mean, over the last couple of years, we have diversified in so many different angles and moving away from, from the ambition to democratize uh, payments, uh, making acceptance available for anyone. Uh, we're now in the, 
you know, in a place where we're actually trying to, to uh, democratize commerce, meaning that we, you know, payments is one, one uh, of the products that we bring to the market. But more importantly, there are so many uh, correlating products that can help sort of small businesses grow and, 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 and thrive eventually. Uh, so, so PSD then becomes less uh, important, less relevant for us. We see it more as, a, as an opportunity, you know, with, with, uh, with the help of PSD too, we, we, uh, we expect, you know, bank data to be more broadly available and also for us so that we can further sort of democratize the commerce platform that we're building. I actually think our core challenge is uh, how much, how high density we can get of top talent within the company. I think that's a much greater challenge than regulations, to be honest. We do tend to see regulation as an opportunity more than a threat, even though it's, of course, a lot of work and it's painful to deal with sometimes, but it is still kind of equal for the market. And we think innovation done well uh, will give us leverage. The more regulation you have, actually, uh, that's how we would see it. Probably. So if I would point out one thing, it's the talent density and the way that talent can execute on our plans, basically. So that's our challenge. One kind of trend is that, that I, what I think will happen is, if you look at historically, when, when you authorize a bank payment, back in the days you had scratch cards, you know, and you had to kind of scratch and you got some kind of one-time code. Um, and then came along, you know, token generators, a piece of hardware you need to kind of carry with you or you have it in, 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 a, you know, in a drawer somewhere. What's happening now is that these kind of the cage procedures is moving, they're moving into the mobile phone. So, you know, you get a text message with a one-time code or in Sweden you have mobile bank ID. And these things are all making it more convenient for the consumer to execute the bank transfer. And so, uh, from our point of view, that, that, that's good news, right? Because then increasingly it will be convenient to pay, make payments based on bank transfers. I think that trend is something that, that we're seeing. It's something that, that we kind of, uh, is, is, kind of, is kind of helping us. It's, it's kind of helping the consumer. Uh, and, and I think that will continue uh, in the next few years. We launched a business in September 15. We've lent circa 400 million pounds so far. We want to lend another just under half a billion this year. Um, and probably double that next year, so another seven, eight hundred million next year to get to a billion and a half or so lending book. If you look at that, why, why do I need to worry about any market outside the UK? The dynamics in the UK are such where there's so much pent up demand for, um, uh, for companies to actually be able to get good, good access to debt financing. I mean, today, standing here, our, our qualified pipeline's probably 700 million pounds worth of opportunities to lend to, right? So for me, passporting's not an issue today. And again, my, my view is focus on a, on a market and actually look at becoming a, a major, major player within that market before you actually go and spread yourself too thin. And on the flip side, for the UK market, we've actually found Brexit to be positive in terms of the major banks, as bad as they are, almost get worse in times like this because they, they start retreating even more. The industry per se is changing so rapidly right now, even though you don't really consider the, the changes as, as rapid as they, they actually are, I think. What we see with the change in, in sort of the regulatory landscape is, uh, you know, a new way of, of uh, payments emerging. Uh, you have a convergence between everything from online to offline, a convergence between payments and point of sales. Um, so I mean, the, the whole sort of payments landscape is is changing quite rapidly right now, and uh, I think uh, I think the, the landscape will look significantly different in, in five years, meaning that so the, the traditional players that's been there for the last 60 years uh, from a payments perspective, they will definitely be around. There will still be banks, no question about that. Uh, but there will be a, a, quite an interesting shift in five years. I think there will be a, a significant revenue shift from, from banks. They, as I said, they will still remain extremely important and and most likely very uh, 
successful going forward as well. But there is a, a pretty big chunk of revenues that will be um, that will be sort of reallocated to, to other type of players for sure. And I think with the, the emergence of, of a bank to, to bank payments, um, with the help of PSD2 fueling that even further, especially in Europe, there will be new players uh, and um, competing with both cash card invoicing, etc.